In this video, I want to show you this Excel document that I actually created for my wife uh, because uh, they needed to put some uh, project plan together and their company has this uh, suite of uh, Microsoft Excel and most of the Excel products. But for example, they don't have Microsoft Project where you can easily you know, create uh, again charts such as this one where you can uh, maintain dependencies between the projects uh, or the tasks and whenever something needs to be updated, for example, if you think that uh, this task is going to take longer than uh, originally planned, that you can just change the effort or you can change the dates. And if you have dependencies between those uh, tasks, they get uh, updated automatically. As you can see here, just by changing a single day here, uh, I have uh, all the other tasks has moved out. The group for this group of uh, tasks has automatically updated. So in this extent, it works pretty much the same as the Microsoft Project. And whenever I was using Microsoft Project, this was most of the function that I used that made my life really, really easy. Because once you have this framework done, then it is really easy to move the dates around um, if you have issues with you know, scheduling or resources or just uh, something takes longer than usual. So in this video, I'm going to show you how this Excel works and what are the different features in it. And for those who watch my YouTube channel regularly, this is something that I'm trying out as a digital download document that I'm going to sell on Etsy. So it's uh, a new downloadable document. So at the end, you will find the link to that uh, in the description. If, and if you like this document, and if you think that it's going to make your life easier, if it's helpful for you, you can obviously purchase it. So the main screen, Again, I was trying to do some uh, something which is similar to project. It looks like Microsoft Project. So on the left, you have all your tasks that you can group in, in various groups. You can see here. And on the right, you have a Gantt chart, which gets automatically updated. So the idea here is that you only work in the left side of the document and the right side gets updated automatically. And you can see that I have tasks, uh, which are these. Uh, I can group the task in two different groups or two different levels. Let's say this is level one and level two. And all those levels obviously have a different representation here in the, in the Gantt chart. So it shows that, you know, these tasks that are from here to here, they are shown here in uh, this green color. And the group which, well, groups these tasks together is uh, shown like this in the document. So it shows the end, the beginning and the end of this uh, period in the project. So for each task, you can maintain a start date and the end date. You can also define the number of days, the effort. I just find this easier to manipulate the days, in, uh, sorry, the efforts or the days instead of changing the date itself. This is why I decided to use it as a separate column. You have an option to maintain the actual finish date as well. You can assign resources and you can also do completion. Of course, if you have a simpler project or you, you don't need tracking, maybe you can just hide these three fields if you don't need them. And on the left, you can see the Gantt chart itself. Uh, the Excel is auto automatically going to mark all the holidays. So that's what you are going to see in uh, gray. And then you see the tasks, the various groups. And there are a few uh, special fields as well. So for example, here you can see a milestone, which is uh, described here in the task. And um, if you maintain a word holiday that you want to, you know, specially mark, that gets displayed in different colors. So it's, you know, that this is not an actual task that needs to be done. As I said, you can maintain the actual dates as well. They show up as uh, uh, these special pattern. So you can just um, see on, on, the, on the Gantt chart how long the, uh, the task was planned and whether it was finished on time or later than uh, expected. And uh, you can see here, a, the current day is always highlighted. So whenever you are working on this document uh, and whenever you open this, this highlight will automatically move to the day, well, to the current day. On the left side, on the task side, there are also some uh, color coding as well. So now you can see that uh, some tasks are displayed in yellow. And I think if I move this one, this would get uh, displayed. You no, know, maybe if I reduce it to two, Ah, oh, sorry, no, this one. So some task would get displayed in yellow, which means that this is a task which uh, has to be done in the current week. Uh, the red one uh, basically say that this is a task that has to be completed today. So basically the end date equals today. And then anything which is uh, displayed in bold, that is something that you need to work on today. So you can see that 
for today I have two tasks and they are shown in bold. So again, it just makes it easier for you just to quickly have a glance at the task list and see what you need to see or what you or your team needs to work on. And probably you could see that, and I also, also mentioned that as you start manipulating these values, the, the chart gets automatically updated. And of course, let's say I have linked all these tasks together. So one task starts after the other. So obviously if I increase the effort on this one, all the others would get pushed out along with the group as well. The resource is just a resource dropdown where you can, you know, maintain your resources here on the settings page. So it's basically just a list of names. Uh, so here you can pick them from a drop down and uh, the only additional thing I've put in this document, there is a resource page which uh, gives you a very basic uh, resource utilization map. Um, it only calculates uh, on which days uh, the, uh, the, the particular resource is assigned to a task or specifically it says if it's one, then you know that person is assigned to a single task on that day. And if it's two, three or more, then the, uh, the person is assigned to multiple tasks. So here it gives a very easy look of your project. Basically anything which is white is under utilization or that resource is not working on any task in this project. You know, one is ideal if you assume that one person is working on a single project and anything more than one indicates that uh, they are assigned to multiple projects. So it could be that, you know, they wouldn't need 100% of their time to work on that project. So, you know, maybe two or three is acceptable, but um, if, if it's not, then at least you know what are the uh, particular days that you need to focus on. And here, just to make this a little bit more useful, I just set up a very simple project, which let's say you want to set up a new e-commerce storefront. So that's the main group one or the level one of the project. You are not restricted to have only one level ones. You can have multiple level ones and multiple level twos, any number of uh, tasks within them. So there is no restriction on that at all. And within level one, I have uh, two level two groups, which is design, vendor selection, implementation. So let's say I want to give, create a new level two. Uh, I'm going to do copy for most of the cases because of all the conditional formatting and some of the other uh, formulas that are already used. So at least you copy them. Uh, so what you can do here is, uh, let's say I, that is going to be my go live period or my go live part of the project. And I've already um, prepared a few uh, different tasks for that. And uh, let's say I want to use the Probably I should tie this to the end of uh, this uh, task. So basically the UI customization. And uh, uh, what I could do is I could just reference that field to the other field. But what I like to do is to use the workday function within Excel, which says that I want to calculate the day from this date. And then in the second parameter, I specify one. And the reason I would like to do use this workday function because it automatically creates um, or it automatically takes the weekends into account. So probably you have seen here that if I, for example, if I have this one, which is four days, so it ends on Thursday, but if I increase it to like six days, then it's going to, uh, oh, sorry, if I increase it to seven days, obviously it will end on Monday because it takes into account that Saturday and Sunday is a weekday. So that's not just six, seven days from this, but it's actually, you know, including the weekend as well. So that's why it's, it is better to use the workday function. And um, let's say that the end of the project is, sorry, the end of the task is the, uh, the start plus also the the number of days minus one. You always have to add minus one. So now you can see that I specified two days and then the task for two days is drawn and it automatically updates the, the timeline for the group as well because the group just uses a minimal function to calculate the earlier start date and the latest end date, which is basically the duration. Let's say this data load is going to take five days. Um, next, let's say that I want to tie my go live communication to the end of the, the data load. So I'm going to do this. And in this case, uh, and I'm going to say that my uh, start date is, 
uh, my end date minus the duration. So if I specify two, now we can see that the, uh, the communication is tied to the end of the uh, historical data load. So if I increase that, then the communication moves along with it. And I just made an error, so it should be minus the duration plus one. And then um, I can do the rest for the others. So I, I think I'm just going to copy this and the milestone is going to be that and the go live support is going to follow after that. So shutdown of the old system is three days. The milestone is, is one day. I mean, usually milestones are one day and let's say we have a 30 day uh, post go live support. And with only that much typing, you can see that the chart has automatically updated and now we can see that I've already created my Excel all until the 2nd of February. But if I select the, the column with you know, all the contents in it, and if I just use this copy functionality, then I can just copy the rest of the field well, into the right, which is going to copy all the, the values, the formulas and the conditional formatting. And I think oh, for some reason it doesn't copy the, um, the column width. But I can easily fix that if I just select the, uh, the column and I just do a format painter. So now I just extended my planning all the way to the 12th of April. And now you can see that the my period has been extended for the you know fairly long post call live support. And you can see that the group has been updated as well. So we only needed to do a few things here and our GAN chart has been created automatically. Probably the only thing I should really check now is uh, uh, I should check my formulas as well. So you can see that the, uh, the total effort for the group is calculated as 43 days, which is the sum of these. And uh, for the weighted completion rate, I should also remove, sorry, resize this uh, field. So I obviously calculated the weighted resource or the weighted completion date for all these. So if I do 100% of these, obviously that's just 16% of the total completion of the 43 days that we have in the group. And of course, after that, I can just assign my resources. So let's see that, uh, you know, Steve is going to do this. Uh, the shutting down is, is going to be, uh, let's say, Maria. And then we have a milestone we can, which you can assign to James and then the rest can go to Maria as well, to go live support. And if I go back to the resources, now we can see that there is a uh, big assignment for Maria with the exception of the actual go live milestone. But the, uh, the activity before and the post go live activity is now assigned to Maria. And all this is done using built-in formulas within Microsoft Excel. If you will be using this Excel file and if you forget any of these details, I've included everything in this help worksheet. So you can see the color legends for the various colors that are used either in the task list or in the calendar view or the Gantt chart. And then I've also included the formulas that I mentioned here uh, in with some screenshots. So how you, you know, calculate the, the dates for the various groups and also how you calculate the weighted average. And I also mentioned these things about using the format painter. And also if you're doing a lot of co co copy and paste between this document and some other documents, there is a really good option here in the paste to only paste with values. So you don't bring some of the formatting over from let's say another Excel document, which might overwrite the conditional formatting that is used in this document. So that will be all in a nutshell. If you are interested in this uh, document, you will find the Etsy link in the video description. But that will be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you next video.